Hey everybody, Wendy Clanky from Blue Cat Studio. Today is another episode of Tech Tuesday or Technique Tuesday. And so I wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about the like how important a value sketch is. And I think the best way to do it is to actually illustrate. So I'm going to begin and I'm just going to pull up here kind of a picture of the pumpkin that I want to sketch. Now I've purposely chosen something that is really more or less black and white. Now if I wanted to take this guy and make it completely black and white, I could literally on my iPad here grab one of these and now it is truly black and white. So I'm working in a completely monotone, monochrome, mono, mono something um, environment. So why does this matter? Why do we care about a value study or value sketch? So let me just do a quick, a quick, a quick sketch here. And I'm not going to be super fixated on getting the shape right, I'm using a pencil to just kind of put that pumpkin in place. And of course, it's nice and seasonal but we'll talk about why this matters. So for example, if you, um, if you, you know, do a lot of art and you kind of look at it and say, you know, it all seems a little bit mushy, it doesn't pop, whatever, a value sketch is gonna be super helpful. So materials you'll need, any old white sketch paper, you can use a Sharpie, you can use a chalk pastel, which is fun because you can blend, you can even just do this with pencil. I'm going to go with the black, with the black chalk pastel. So we're going to think of ourselves in terms of three colors. So I'm going to draw just a quick value scale right here in my super neat and tidy. So at the top, we'll go with pure black, which looks a lot like that, right? And we're going to try and do this pumpkin in just three colors. All right, we'll mush that in so it's really black. Well, something. So chalk pastels are not my forte, right? It's, I'm not good at this but that's okay because it's really just to illustrate a concept, right? And then here we've got kind of a gray of, of sorts. And then we have white. So those are the three tones that we are going to be using, just three, all right? And so what this does is it really allows you to do a quick assessment of, of, a, of a picture or a thing that you wanna do. And if everything kind of ends up in the same mid gray tone, um, and you don't have a lot of the sort of the, the blacks and the whites on either side, then that's a really good key that you need to add some contrast. So sometimes when I'm, um, you know, I once found this photo that I absolutely loved. Okay, so I'm kind of blacking in here for better or for worse. And because this is a smudgeable stuff, I can kind of smudge it. But I was looking at this photo and I really loved it, but I also felt like it, it fell very, very short. Hey, Holly, what's going on? So one of the reasons it fell short is because the entire background and much of the foreground when shifted to black and white was very gray. And, and so that's an opportunity for you as an artist to take some artistic license and say, okay, you know what? In order to make this composition more effective, I need to choose some places where I'm going to amp up the black or dial it way back and add some white. So we've got a basic outline. I kind of left the tops a little less whatever, uh, you know, less sketched in at present because I'm hoping that I can use my fingers to, to smudge. I'm getting messy. This is chalk pastel, black chalk, basically. All right. So then I can look at this guy and say, okay, you know, along this section here, it's very, very dark. Down at the base, it's very, very dark. Now, if I weren't looking at a reference photo, I would still need to be able to kind of make this call. So you can think about shading in terms of where are my dark parts, right? So we're going to kind of sketch that in and sketch that in. And then we also, know, and I might do a little smudging just to kind of make it look a little softer. And again, today I'm not here to show off gorgeous, amazing artwork, but I do want to talk about some of the things that I personally think about as I am doing a composition because they really do matter. All right, and then we need a little bit of the dark that kind of comes up on this side here. So we're just kind of getting getting some good coverage in. So you're rarely going to expect to find a lot of the dark stuff up up top. You know, there may, may be a few things or something that's actually darkly pigmented. Okay, and then did I add a few extra lobes? I did. Well, all right. So we're going to kind of bring some more darkness up along here. We'll make this section so I'm also, as I do this, I'm, I'm kind of leaving some space in the lines and the dividers, and I'm going to come through and do a little bit of, of smudging. Oh, Victoria says hello. Hi, Victoria. How you doing? 
And then on this side, because I'm looking at my my picture again, this is just a reference picture. I, uh oh, what happened? Had this thing going. I'm trying to make sure I. Oh, I lost my I lost my camera. Are we still here? Can you guys still see me? Let me check the chat. Somebody, please say hi if you can still see me. I feel like my stuff just went down. Anybody? Are we still there? All right. Well, we're just going to keep going and see if that works. Yep. Okay. You still got me. Great. Okay. So I, wait, but my camera's gone. So now you can't see what I'm doing. Goodness me. Ah, it may be Tech Tuesday, but my technology is going bonkers on me, huh? So can, you can't see my pumpkin, can you? Um, Cause it looks like my thing went away. Like, like literally the whole tab that had my stream yard going. All right. Well, Let's see here. Close that out. And I'm just going to take this and see if I can't take it down sideways. So I apologize. We're getting a little janky here. I may not be able to see the comments as much as I'd like to. Um, okay, here we go. All right, there we go. Okay, we got it now. So if I'm using this sort of pumpkin from the internet, I'm still looking at, you know, I've got the darks down in here. It's dark right at the base, kind of at the bottom. And then I've got the darker tones in here and in here and then along through here. So oftentimes our brain sees one thing, but our eyes see another thing. So it's learning how to kind of see what, what we've got going on. And I'm going a little bit uh, conservative on this. So I'm going to use my finger to do some blending here. And on my photo, I saw that there was kind of a highlight here. So I'm going to do the blending there. And you notice how we have deep, rich blacks. Now this is technically was a black, a white pumpkin, but I'm going to, I'm going a little darker just so that we can kind of play, play with the contrast and play with the tones and all those things. Now I'm going to smooth out these lines a little, and then we've got a lot more light in here. And so I'll kind of bring some of that in like so. And again, chalk pastels are not my are not my strength by any by any means. And then I can kind of go lighter in here and then I've got a much lighter along here. And so sometimes sketching something or finger finger sketching or whatever um, in just straight black and white is a really great way to learn more about the shadows and the highlights and to think about your composition, right? Because if it, if it all comes out exactly the same gray, is it really gonna be much of a composition? So black and white really forces you to think about that. And again, this is one of those things that's really great to do. You can even just kind of sketch it with a, with a Sharpie and do some hatch lines to kind of get a sense of, you know, how that pumpkin comes together. So I've, I've gone significantly like darker on this as opposed to white. And I've used some artistic license, kind of like I suggested that you, you could do. But I'm focusing on, you know, where are some of those highlights, where are some of the dark zones. Um, if you feel like, and that's the beauty of chalk pastel, you got something that was too dark, you can kind of kind of come through and remove a little, little bit of it with an eraser. Yes, I have a gummy eraser somewhere, but I don't know where it is. So that's one way of doing the value study. Now I could flip this over and we could say, all right, with a Sharpie, again, if we're thinking about our tones, you know, I have pure black, I can have kind of variegated black and I can have white. So again, have three tones. So here we'll just sort of sketch our reference pumpkin. Let's get a little artistic with this. A lot of license. That was a slightly squashed squash shaped pumpkin, right? We're just going to town with this. All right. And so now on this guy, I could say, all right, I know that I've got a section here that's dark, I'll kind of dark it in. I know I've got some section in here that's sort of dark and dark it in. And again, this is a study. This is not intended to be a finished piece, but when you do some practice in terms of where the dark points, where the light points, where are the gray points, and really truly looking at it that way, it is going to help you immensely in figuring out how that project is supposed to go. So again, I overdrew my pumpkin, but that's fine. So 
I think I can just still, again, you know, is my style, is it stylish? Is it rad? Not so much, but does it make sense? Yep, it does. So that's really kind of what we're looking at here is how do we, okay, so I'm going to add some grays in here. If this is my darkest black, how do I make my pumpkin really kind of stand out? And so this is an exercise that's really worth doing. You know, next time you're going to come up with your own concept or you're trying to draw something or you're not sure, you can always look at, you know, somebody else's artwork and attempt to do a very quick value sketch and see, you know, how does it stack up? You know, that may in fact be exactly what it is about a piece of art that you don't like is that they haven't got a good balance of the darks and the lights. In fact, one of my most favorite photos that I turned into a painting, I had to take a lot of creative license to kind of make it work. So again, just with a, a basic Sharpie. Now this is super harsh, right? I mean, we don't have a ton. I mean, it's hard to do an all white thing with a big black Sharpie, but I'm trying, but I think we've kind of captured some dimension here by um, doing the solid dark blacks then the kind of the mid gray tones and then the whites. And you can look at that and pretty much go, yeah, that's a pumpkin or an acorn squash or some sort of thing that grows on a vine that you crack open and can eat the seeds on. So I hope that was helpful. Let me just quickly check the chats because I feel like I missed a few. Um, so, okay, you guys see the pumpkin and, um, oh, watch later on replay at hospital. Gotta go. I'm I'm gonna bet that's Valerie. If so, Valerie, be well. Thinking good thoughts for you. Um, and again, if you guys have any questions, let me know um, if you catch this on the replay or whatever, but we've just shown you two ways to kind of mess around with values. And they were very fast, right? This is really more about learning and thinking and, and kind of processing processing what you see as opposed to completing a finished piece. Um, I can't find my sketchbook, but I think I sat there one day with a black um, colored pencil and did a whole handful of, um, uh, what are they called? Like value sketches of just photographs I found in my cell phone. And you can do them like small, you don't have to go big. I went a little bit big just because it'd be easier to see on camera, um, but it's a really fun way to wrap your brain around creating art. So I hope you find that helpful. And um, and we will go from, ooh, a sugar skull. Yeah, I could do a sugar small. Okay, so Robin, Robin asked, how do you translate to colors? That's a great question. Um, so if you're translating something to colors, you, and it's gonna depend on the color, um, but for, Example, if I'm using a, like a series of greens, I could even say, all right, well, I've got a dark green, I've got a light green, and then I've got a, a super light green. These, And, you know, it doesn't matter that I've got kind of a, some cold greens and some warm greens here. I could use all three of these and allow to have some kind of blending in between. But more than anything, it's really meant for... Um, uh, composition, right? Making sure that you have the right balance of the lights and the darks. So uh, for those of you who have access to the Frida picture that we did, I mean, her face is like the shadows are deep blues and purples and the highlights are yellow. And so if you were to say squint at them or kind of look at them through the lens of black and white, a, um, a super bright yellow like this is going to be very much in the light tones or very, very pale gray. Whereas a deep blue like this or even a navy blue i don't have a navy blue on me right now but somewhere or a purple well that's going to be kind of mid but these are going to come off as significantly darker and so that's kind of another way to do it so you can go with analogous colors where you're in the like the red orange yellow zone or you could go with opposite colors again that was kind of where like yellow and purple were really successful um, because they are opposite. I would go with a darker purple than this. I'm literally just grabbing paints that are sitting here on my desk um, in front of me. Um, but so those, those are, there's a whole bunch of ways to, to, to translate to color. And that can be a little bit more complicated. Um, but 
what often happens, and I see this a lot, especially with, with newer painters, is they get a whole bunch of colors that are all kind of in the same, same brightness zone. And, um, and so nothing really pops out or they struggle to have stuff pop out. So while these are some interesting colors, um, they're all very similar. This red might be a little bit darker. I'd have to, yeah, you squint at it to give it almost like the black and white test. Can you see that? Um, this might appear very mushy, but if I were to then add a bright, bright yellow, which is a lot lighter. Now, if you were to take a photo of this in black and white, you would know instantly where, where we're at. So the translating it to colors is definitely going to be a little bit more complicated. And that's, that's, that's probably for another, another technique Tuesday. Um, but even just practicing again, the quick, the quick black and white rendition or rendering of, of a concept is going to really help you figure out how to make it richer. And so lights and darks are really, really important as are in between places. Okay. And somebody says, I like your skull face, the sugar skull. Thank you so much. Yeah. This is the latest uh, project that I just released to the inner circle team. Um, so if this is something you're interested in, let me know. It's only available to members. Uh, technically my doors aren't open yet, but I may be opening them a little bit later this month or even this week depends. Um, and for basically 20 bucks a month, you get access to all of the designs that I've ever produced. Um, I have full tutorials and stuff, but this wasn't meant to be a sales pitch. I'm really here just to kind of show you guys some cool tips and tricks and hope that they uh, will help you out. Okay. So now that I've been jabbering and yabbering, I will talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye guys.